it's very rare when you find out that one of your favorite YouTubers has a film that's now at least 10 years old. Of course, the YouTuber I'm talking about is Evan Santiago. If you don't know who he is, let me give you a quick rundown. He's from New York, and supposedly he made films from a very young age. At the very least, his films were not good. But as he got older, his films started to become a lot more better. They had very good visuals and very good storytelling. If his name also sounds familiar, it was also because he was the creator of Stan Frederick Behind the Scenes. Years later, the series would then turn into a semi-reboot, semi-sequel. It's actually better than the original from what I can tell, and it's really good. Okay, so aside from all of that, let's check out his first, I guess, first fan film, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Young Blood. The first thing I like to get off my back is that this film is not good. It's not the best Nightmare on Elm Street fan film, but it's certainly not the worst one. But I will say this out loud, it's not as good as the original, but it does have some charm factor to it. The plot is very simple. It's about a bunch of kids who are having the same nightmare of the same killer, Freddy Krueger. Obviously, it's Nightmare on Elm Street. What, what, what can you do? I mean, it's literally the same premise as the original film. I should also probably mention this film came out the same year as the remake. At least that's what I know. Like I said before, it's basically the same premise as the original, but the only thing I like about it is the dialogue. I'm really glad that Evan was able to make it more original, but the problem is the acting. I mean, I can understand why, it's because they're your friends, but you think maybe you could have done rehearsals? The cinematography is all over the place. It doesn't even feel like it's trying to be like a proper movie. There are some angles which I think are pretty good, but then there are others which looks like they were just made right at the last minute. The most important thing when making a film is that you have to make sure that the camera angle is right where you want it to be. You can't just put the camera somewhere at random and just hit record and expect it to be good. It has to be timed persistently and positively and carefully. The effects... Oh boy. Where do I begin with the effects? Well first off, let's talk about the night to day transition. It's like they didn't even try with this one. At one point, it's daytime, then it goes to another character, and then all of a sudden it goes back to the original character and it's nighttime. It's like, what happened? It's like this movie is all over the place. I'm not even going to bother talking about Freddy Krueger's voice, because what's the point? The guy was young. One of my favorite effects is when the main girl goes into the bathroom to take some pills, and then she looks into the mirror, and then Freddy Krueger appears. This is probably my favorite effect in the entire film. The kills were okay. Well, let's be honest, the kills are off-screen, but I think they're okay. The only kill that's salvageable is Evan Santiago's character. It gets stabbed right through the chest, and you actually see the blades go through the chest. Well, also the shirt, but hey, it's the only kill that's on-screen, so keep it in the film. Of course, Evan plays both the victim and the killer, so... Props for the green screen effect? Despite my negativity with the film, it's not a bad fan film for Nightmare on Elm Street. If you want to watch a better remake of Nightmare on Elm Street, just watch this one. Especially since it just turned 10 years old. 